What are we going to be going over here? Cash dividends and treasury stock that's issued here as a dividend and how it sets up a restriction here on the shareholders equity of the retained earnings here on this treasury stock that's issued as a dividend. So for our example here we're going to have these numbers here. We're going to have cash sitting at 390000 We're going to have some preferred stock outstanding 6% cumulative $50 par here at 600000 and we're going to have some common stock. Uh, there's going to be just 300,000 shares issued and outstanding here for $3 million and then there's some additional paid in capital here for preferred stock at 300,000 and then we have treasury stock we're going to have 28 holding 2,800 shares that's common stock at its cost here $67,200 and then what's sitting in retained earning is $210,000 so this is our example here we're going to have dividends in arrears here for one year and is paid by issue issuing treasury stock 1500 shares of treasury stock and that's um, for the dividends that's uh, due here on the preferred stock that's for one year late here and then we're going to have current year dividends paid for the preferred stock there's going to be a six percent dividend and in our common stock it's going to be 60 cents per share here so we're going to be looking at the situation where we got this preferred stock it's got the six percent dividend here for the current year but for the past year they did one year in arrears here we're going to actually paying um, that dividend out in the form of treasury stock we're going to issue uh, 1500 shares of treasury stock to the holders here of the preferred stock. Now, the other thing we have the current market price for a preferred stock is $160 per share, and common stock, the uh, market price here is $24 per share. And then um, the net income for the current year, it's estimated at $154,000. So that's what our estimate amount is. Okay. So the first thing we have to do here for this problem is we first have to determine a number of shares of common stock outstanding after the treasury stock is issued as a dividend. So we have our preferred stock dividends that are going to be paid before the common stock dividends. That's the key here. So we have to first out figure out what's sitting here in our total uh, outstanding here in common stock. So we have common stock. We have 300 shares outstanding here, but 2,800 uh, shares here are um, bought back and sitting in treasury stock. So our total amount here common stock that we have is 297,200 shares after we strapped out here to 2,800 uh, shares here of um, common stock that's being held here held here as treasury stock from the total amount here of 300,000 outstanding. Now uh, we're going to have the preferred stock arrears distribution here in this treasury stock. So we're going to distribute of the 2,800 shares that are being held here at, in treasury stock, 1,500 of those shares here are going to be distributed to the uh, preferred stock shareholders as that dividends and arrears. So our total common stock shares outstanding, well we have the 297,000 here plus the 1,500 uh, shares here that are reissued, uh, treasury stock being reissued here as common stock. So a total shares of 298,700 shares are of common stock and then the common stock dividend here is 60 cents per share. So our common stock cash dividend that we're going to have to be paying is 179,220. $20. So we figured out um, we had this is the key here. We're working with this treasury stock here that's being issued as a dividend here to pay this the preferred stock that's in arrear. So that's coming into play here. So we had to determine after we issued those treasury stocks here for that dividend, we had to determine a total number of shares of common stock. And then based on the dividend that's going to be paid on those common stocks per share, we can we determine the total common stock. A cash dividend that's going to have to be paid. Okay, so now let's go down and we're going to really be concentrating here on this restriction on retained earnings. That's an amount put in reserve for either working capital, debt obligations. In this case, we're going to, for our example, it's going to be for a treasury stock. There's legal requirements here and we're going to be looking at how we deal with uh, a restriction here on our retained earnings. So what we're going to, the accounts we're going to be dealing with here are going to have this cash account. We're going to have have a treasury stock equity account and then we're going to have our retained earnings here in our equity here. So the question we have to deal with when we're paying these cash dividends here, number one, do we have enough, enough cash here to pay the dividend? And number two here, do we have enough retained earnings to pay the dividend here? So uh, we have a reduction here in our retained earnings or debit to retained earnings corresponds with our credit or reduction here in our cash when you're paying these cash dividends. And also what we have in 
play here and we're going to be working with is this treasury stock. This is where we're talking. We're going to have to issue treasury stock as a dividend based on its market price here to pay that one year dividend in arrears here for that preferred stock. So not to be confused with it, but this adds a little twist to everything here where we have to deal with this treasury stock that's being issued as a dividend. So just starting with our accounts here, we'll just look at here. So our cash, we had a debit amount here of 390000 in it. Our treasury stock, we have a debit amount here of 67200 Now remember, the treasury stock is a contra account here um, to the uh, equity account here. So we have debit here at 67200 and then our retained earnings are sitting at 210000 That's what we're given here at the beginning here before we Deal, work with our dividends. So what we have to do and what we're going to be looking at here is a restriction here on this treasury stock. A legal requirement. Uh, companies have to, in this case you have to reduce your retained earnings here by the amount of the treasury stock that you're holding at its cost here. And its cost is 67200 so we're going to have a reduction here in our retained earnings by $67,200. And that's going to leave us with a balance here of $142,800 here in our retained earnings. And what we mean here by this restriction here, it's a restriction on the dollar amount. It's set aside as a reserve here. Uh, the restriction is, a, uh, again, a set, a set aside amount. It's not a subtraction from retained earnings. Although we subtract it here from retained earnings, it's a set aside. It's like a savings account we have to put, put aside here for. In this case, it's for that treasury stock for our example here. So what we're we're sitting with, again, understand that. That's our reserve here. We are sitting with our retained earnings here at $142,800. And we're going to have to pay those dividends out of our retained earnings. So we have to have enough retained earnings to pay those dividends here uh, that we're going to be going over. And we also have to have enough cash over here to pay those dividends. So let's first look at the treasury stock dividend. Let's start with that here. That was, it's going to be for 36 thousand dollars. So we're going to reduce our treasury stock here for $36,000 credit that and then we're going to have to and correspondingly we're going to have to reduce our retained earnings or debit our retained earnings for $36,000. And that's based on the fact that we're going to issue 1,500 shares of these treasury stock here at the market value of $24 per share. That's the market value per share here for the common stock and that equates to $36,000. So here we had that treasury stock issued here as a dividend here for those preferred stock one years in arrears here. You credit or reduce your treasury stock by $36,000 and then you retain earnings here by $36,000. So that's the treasury stock that's being issued here and that's issued here as a dividend. So okay, next thing we have to deal with is that preferred stock dividend here. And that was those $600,000 uh, here was outstanding at a 6% dividend rate here. So that equates to 36000 here for the preferred stock. So what we're going to do here in this case, we're going to have to debit or reduce our retained earnings here by 36000 for um, that pre uh, preferred stock dividend here. And then the corresponding entry would be to cash. We're paying it in cash. We'd credit or reduce our cash here by $36,000 for that preferred stock. Okay, so we took care of the treasury stock dividend, the preferred stock dividend here. Now we have to deal with the common stock dividend. And remember, we calculated that here at 298700 That was our first calculation number of shares outstanding times 60 cents per share. Well, that was $179,220 that we're going to have to reduce our, our retained earnings by and also pay out in cash here for the common stock dividend. So we our cash account, we reduce that here, credit that here for $179,220. And then going down to our retained earnings, where we would credit or debit that out here, reduce our retained earnings by $179,220 here. But this is this in where, in where lies the problem here when we set up this reserve here, $67,220 dollars here. We're reducing the amount of retained earnings that's available to pay dividends here. And this is where we come up with the problem. So if we paid the cash dividend, which we really can't because uh, based on what we have in retained earnings here, because we would come up $108,420 short. So would not, we have plenty of cash over here in our cash account to pay that uh, a common stock dividend, but we don't have 
enough retained earnings. So therein lies the problem. But the fact that our net income here is going to, we're estimating for the year at $154,000 here, that would increase our retained earnings. So we would, uh, we would have enough based on our net income. So our retained earnings after our net income would be sufficient to pay those uh, common stock dividends here. So there, let's just say we credit our retained earnings for $154,000 here uh, uh, based on the estimate here of our net income for the year and that would take care of our deficit here. Now just remember if you had the deficit here and you didn't have enough retained earnings then or you wouldn't have any net income or enough increase your in net income then you couldn't pay that cash dividend here uh, uh, for the common stock that we're talking about. But say we did here 154,000 so adding that here to our deficit we're still going to come up with a balance sitting in our retained earnings here at $45,580. Okay so we've taken care of that. Now just remember here that we only could pay those cash dividends here for the common stock providing we had added in our retained earnings here that increased our retained earnings by the amount of the net income that gave us enough balance here to uh, pay those common stock dividends. So what we want to take away from this here is when we're dealing with these reserves here well, for whatever reason I don't know it could be like we mentioned before um, working capital or whatever or debt obligations you have to reduce you whatever is sitting in retained earnings whatever you're setting aside here as a reserve you have to re reduce your retained earnings by that amount and whatever balance you have then you can pay out dividends based on that balance but in this case we run short here on our balance but we had a nut out nut enough net income coming in here which would re increase our retained earnings for the year here. So uh, based on that then we were able to pay out that uh, common stock dividend here. So uh, what the other thing you want to note here at these when you're setting up your restriction here your set aside here uh, which is not a subtraction here retain earnings but in your notes to your financial statements here set in the amount of reserve uh, dollars that are being set aside detail it in your notes to the financial statement for whatever your reserve is all the details of it and what it involves and the amount that it's going to reduce your retained earnings by that you have to put into your financial statements okay so we've taken care of this uh, restriction here to our retained earnings. So we have to answer those questions here. Do we have enough cash here to pay our dividends? And if and in this case we did, just to go over that again, we started out with 390,000, we had a preferred stock dividend here, 36,000 plus our common stock dividend here, 179,220, and that difference here, reduction here in our cash, still leaves us here with $174,780 balance here um, remaining in our cash account. So we had plenty of cash here, but then the question we had, did we have enough retained earnings? Because remember, these dividends here are a reduction to your retained earnings as well as a reduction to your cash here if it's a cash dividend in this case. In this case we had two. We both had a treasury stock dividend here and we had those cash dividends. Treasury stock reduces our retained earnings and I guess the cash dividend also reduced our retained earnings. So with our retained earnings we had to come up with that amount that we had here. If we had, in this case, we had the net income coming in, an estimate here of 154000 that gave us enough in our retained earnings here to pay out that extra dividend, our common stock dividend. If we didn't have this net income coming in, then we wouldn't have been able to pay the common stock dividend, even though we had enough cash. Okay, so we've taken care of that. Let's go look at one other thing here. So let's say we had the option, just so you understand how these dividends work here. So let's look at option two. So if the treasury stock was not issued as a dividend, could the dividend on the preferred stock and common stock be paid all in cash? And again, all I want to look at here is the fact here that we, let's say we have this, we got this cash account here, we got our treasury stock, we have our retained earnings here, but with the treasury stock, Regardless here, we have to set up the reserve here. We had that $67,200 we uh, sitting in treasury stock, so we had to reduce our retained earnings by that amount here, $67,200. That gave us the balance here. And so uh, just to point out here, 
if all the dividends were paid in cash and we would have plenty of cash to do that so we had two years one years of re, uh, dividends and a re, reserve and arrears here on our preferred stock that was six percent times the six hundred thousand outstanding for thirty six thousand then we had the second year here the same amount here six percent times six hundred thousand thirty six thousand and then we had our cash dividend that we had to pay out here one hundred seventy nine thousand two hundred and twenty so our debt credits here to our cash reduce our cash by that amount here we still have enough cash remaining here uh, enough cash remaining such that we could pay those those dividends all in cash here and then our retained earnings same deal here we're sitting with 142,800 but run into the same problem here uh, even though we we didn't use the treasury stock we still had to pay the preferred stock in um, that six percent dividend rate for two years here and then our common stock amount so we run into the same problem we come up with a deficit here because we couldn't pay enough uh, we had enough cash to pay the common stock here, but because of the set asides and everything, we come up short here. But again, here is where we threw in our threw in our retained earnings here. We increased our retained earnings here by the amount of net income that gives us the same balance here. So we come up with the same balance, Pro providing we have the retained earnings, then we could pay those cash dividends here. So again, retained earnings after the net income isn't we have a sufficient amount here to pay the dividends here and we paid all our dividends here in cash rather than uh, treasury stock but again we have to set aside that reserve here and that was really a legal requirement just remember here when you're setting aside these reserves for whatever reason you have working capital or debt obligations you have to set some monies aside and when you do that you have to take whatever's sitting in your retained earnings and reduce it by the amount of set asides here to come up with what's available here and you can only pay out dividends that is available here in the retained earnings and then in this case we just added in with based on our net income where we actually increased it for the year here so based on that increase we're able to pay out all the dividends so this this just goes over an overview here and how these reserves are set aside here for your in your retained earnings your equity account here for any amounts that have to be set aside for like this treasury stock here working capital or dividend obligations here and then you pay your dividends out of whatever is sitting here in your reserve okay so that takes care of our subject here on uh, reserve set asides here in both treasury stock dividends and cash dividends and how they affect your retained earnings here uh, uh, your equity retained earnings in the company.